I'm pretty sure my side caught the who on that. That was pretty good. Good. <laughs> I'm no Michael Jackson, but I can who like the best of them. Are you for real? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> <laughs> we've, circled, we've circled back to where we started pre-podcast here. Uh, episode one, I had a good run. Two I want to note, look, yes, I want to yeah, note I that I had a good run. Yeah, 124. I knew, I knew, I knew the numbers for a long time. Hey, it gets easier? <laughs> I'm not sure I, it does. All, all streaks must come to an end. <laughs> Might not be true. <laughs> Welcome back. This is We Were Gamers, a podcast about growing older and finding time to game, as well as uh, everything else that happens to us as we tackle the game of life. Not the actual nice. game of life, because that's not a game, and you can oh. go read on the internet why it's not a game. The actual game of life sucks. I Yeah, that's... I don't that's know. Exact is that right there. Is that a meta it, thing you're is trying it to life say there? That's the one that you can set it up from the beginning so that you always win? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Which is why it's not a game. Um, welcome back, you guys. Uh, I think that our cup runneth over today with everyone having finally had time to do something. <laughs> yeah, I know, man. As well as uh, getting back to fantasy football and a whole bunch of stuff. So let's get right at it. How's everybody's uh, weekend? Uh, it was good. Yeah, pretty good overall, I would say. Uh, I actually had some time to play games this past week and weekend uh because i have a uh entry in the chronicles of stuff you have to do as an adult sometimes we we still i'm not still sold on the adulting minute but it seems to have yeah. been the title people shoot at us i don't yeah i agree with you i'm not sold on it but i have an entry here for the journal of the adult ooh uh and uh you know how when you just get hit with the, like, you just completely blindsided by a problem you were not expecting to have happen. Yeah, I mean, that can happen in work or life or car maintenance or, I don't yeah. really, you can. Well, yeah. it's one of those three. Car maintenance? <laughs> it's car maintenance. Oh, no, How again? Guess? Yeah. Uh, I hear, uh, my car has been making this, like, kind of a, uh, eh, whistling is a little too high of a pitch but like a lower pitched whistling noise it really sounded like a belt for a long time okay uh, and and not a long time but like a few weeks and i was like okay when i get a free weekend here i really need to take this in and and get it looked at because this is probably eventually going to be bad now you've had this motor or part of it rebuilt recently yeah it's uh it's been a uh it's been a minute uh since we talked about me taking that car in, uh, hey, uh, it has been there that whole time. I hadn't gotten it back yet. <laughs> oh, wait, 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 wait. The fan squeal belt uh, was yeah. on a loner? No, no, that's my car. Oh, oh, oh okay, so you uh, got it back. Yeah, I, I, I got it back after the weekend. They did the first part of the, the fix, and then they're like, hey... This problem is, you've had this for, like, a long time, and this problem has spread. You know, the, the the pressure that was in the cylinders has been leaking out over a long period of time because this gasket has been broken for quite a while, and the pressure has then moved to other parts of the system that were not intended to be pressurized and then broken more seals and stuff around in other places. Oh, this sounds like all kinds uh... of fun. Yeah, it's a not great amount of time. And, you know, like, if you could think, I don't know how uh, car savvy this podcast is or our listeners are, but if you think about an engine, you know, you have the pistons that go up and down. There's a lot of pressure there. So if that gasket breaks, there's a lot of pressure going somewhere, right? It can't sure. just go away. Yeah. And if, if the other parts of the engine and the transmission aren't meant to be pressurized like that, you can imagine some bad stuff might happen. Um, so luckily it was not all the way bad, but it was heading towards bad, let's say. Um, but the real thing that is the problem, <laughs> all of that was like, they told me that more or less up front, like, Hey, this is going to take a while. We have to drop the transmission and make some changes here to like replace these seals and stuff. It's going to be not cheap. 
uh, they, why did it take them then a week to do all of this? Because something else was horribly wrong. Nope. Or they forgot about your car. No. Oh God. Jeez. <laughs> no. Uh, I want to say they've been nothing but nice to me, but uh, they, their BMW is a wonderful company who decides that there are specialized tools that are needed in order to do certain random ass things. And oh, if you so don't have that tool, you straight up like can't the, do it. The special wrench they needed to take off the essentially proprietary yes. bolts to get at the yeah. It, in order to to reattach my transmission without causing damage to the double clutch gear system, there's a specialized tool they need, and they didn't have it. So they I had to a, overnight it from somewhere in Europe. So they Great. can take it apart, but not put it back together. Right, uh, huh. and then. Uh, that was problem number one. And then problem number two is after they did that, the seal that the second seal that they were replacing is in the, in part of that transmission requires a different specialized tool that they also didn't have a uh, second overnight from Europe. No, no, no. What, what yep. kind of deal did they just dealer just open your car is uh, no. old enough that they should have these tools. They're a specialized BMW independent mechanic. <laughs> not not specialized enough, obviously. Yeah. So uh, obviously that's not my fault. Of course, uh, they offered to pay me for uh, have a, a rental car for me for the weekend and stuff since it went like way way longer than they expected. Wow. Um, I said, well, how about you just keep the rental car and give me the discount money instead? Sure. Uh, which was uh, turned out to be a decent amount there. So, uh, but you know, eventually the car did get back to me uh, and seems to be running just fine. So. Now, but, uh, maybe gosh. I can interest you in a car that currently works uh, being good value for possibly moving on from the car that currently works. Mm. Wait, are you moving on from your current car? Is that what you're saying? No, no. I'm saying maybe it's time for you to move on from your car. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, yeah. You're not necessarily wrong. Um, uh, I hear so. there's pretty good deals out there on some uh, Model 3s. Uh, Teslas? Yeah. Are there? They gotta move a bunch of them, man. I... Do you really want to get involved with a company whose CEO just had to step down because of a tweet? I don't, I don't have a car problem. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Touché. Oh, man. I'm sorry, buddy. Well, well you know, I have, you a, I have a follow up to that. Regarding okay. proprietary bolts, love them. Yeah, uh, given our our Nintendo podcast last week, I decided to pop down my N sixty four to see what I still had in there. Very nice. Yeah, mm-hmm. and you know the games and stuff like that, and then that prompted the Game Boy to come out and all that sort of stuff, and see what was still working and what needed cleaning it it kind of devolved into like a just nintendo nostalgia moment uh and the backs of all those game cartridges when you need to change those batteries Mm. proprietary bolts (laughs) are they Mm. torques or are they Uh, like so they're in inverse torques like they pop out oh what a hassle yeah and your game boy actually has a y not a phillips it's a three-sided phillips Oh, I've seen those before, yeah. 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 Those are like security bits or whatever. Those are dumb. Man, what an annoying thing. Yeah. Yeah, They still use them. Were you actually able to replace any of those batteries? I was, yeah. I popped a new battery into... uh, Oh, I can't even remember now. But I definitely popped in at least two new batteries into some of that stuff just to test it out. I feel like a lot of those cartridges and stuff, the batteries are like not meant to be replaceable. Oh, really? Uh, that was my impression, I guess. Oh. You definitely lose your save as soon as you pop the battery out, but I oh, mean, yeah. I guess that doesn't matter. You've already lost your save since the battery was dead. The battery died, yeah, so yeah. it probably didn't matter. You're right. Yeah. Um, I didn't get no, all the way through that thought. <laughs> very similar to my experience in changing my watch batteries, so. Oh, okay. I mean, that's yeah. not undoable, so. Yeah. I was um, misinformed. Well, more like th- there are easy watch batteries to replace, like some of the ones where you pop the cases off and the case is pressing down on the, um, let's see, it presses down on the positive side of the battery. 
so you don't have to do any work. The battery just falls out. This right, is more yeah. like a Citizen or a harder watch to replace the battery where you have to move a tension spring and the battery kind of like has to be pried out and then you have to move the tension spring again and slide it in. And yeah, I get paranoid about changing those kind of batter- batteries and watches. I, you're not wrong. You bend something, then it's kind of over. Yeah. Um, Straight to GG. <laughs> well, <laughs> this was GG. All my stuff still worked. It required uh, Star Fox and one other game needed some uh, alcohol on the contacts. And uh, it was fun. But yeah, proprietary screws. That was interesting. I was glad to find that I had at some point in the past put into my giant jeweler's kit a set of Nintendo screw heads for my nice my jeweler's kit so that was fun that was that was part one of of weekend game related stuff it but it took a lot of a lot of of my time so i don't really i have you know i played a lot of fire emblem but i think maybe we should jump into someone that maybe accomplished a little bit more than i did (laughs) yeah i uh i finished a thing you guys Yay! Yay! Uh, yeah, after after teasing it two weeks ago, I finally saw credits on uh, Trails in the Sky. All right, second here chapter. It is. Spoilers oh, yeah. don't count anymore. It's time. Well, I have to spoiler censor myself in case he wants to play more in the future. But <laughs> right, right, right. But we're spoiler <laughs> yeah. censoring up through second chapter here. Right. Okay. Uh, so. It is unsafe from this point forward. Michael, JJ, did you love how it went down? Oh, it was great. <laughs> I I loved the way that they they put the the end of the story together. Um, you know, with with each of the each of the characters sort of having a foil on the other side, right? Mm-hmm. In in each of the enforcers and um I I had fortunately read ahead just a little bit, not not anything that spoiled the story, but enough to know that it, you needed to bring certain characters with you in the finale to get extra dialogue options. Okay, I was going to ask if you did that, because some of those are actually pretty cool at stuff that they hint at between those characters for the future, too. So that's not... I don't... Can I jump in here for a second? Sure. This is the stuff that makes me paranoid about playing RPGs and why I get really nervous about it and why I used to have strategy guides is because I don't ever want to feel like I missed out on stuff like that is like, oh, well, but you took all the wrong characters, so you just didn't get content. So I think I think if you look around hard enough these days, you can find people who are good about putting together spoiler free walkthroughs for you. Mm -hmm. And they'll tell you like the bare minimum that you need to know to play through the game and not miss anything. Oh, okay. Like, hey, right. So are. it'll be like it'll be like for the finale. There's the final tower, and it'll say for the first two floors, you might want to consider taking these characters. Interesting. And that's all. It'll, that's all it'll say. Okay. And also, if you were a not using a guide, let's say, and had been paying very close attention to the story up to that point, you might have reasons you would have wanted to bring some of those characters to meet certain other of those characters. Oh, really? given those characters histories together. Oh, yes. Okay, so okay. you you knew who was going to be in the tower. The only the only problem with that strategy is that you didn't know who was going to be on what floor. Right. Yeah. So, so that you could is always the you might, you know, you might lose 5 minutes of progress realizing, "Oh, I should have brought X Y X and Y to this fight instead," and you just reset a save at the bottom of the tower and swap you know, your people and come swap back, your people yeah. out. Hmm. Yeah. Uh that is definitely the problem. But you would, at least once you figure out who it is, uh, you would definitely have reason to go, oh, I should probably have X, Y, or Z here. Um, but uh, in terms of, you know, the the escalation in kind of where the first chapter leaves off to where you get to by the end of the second chapter, isn't it just wild? <laughs> oh, yeah. It just, you know, the story figurati- figuratively and literally takes off. Yes, hmm. you wind like up, that. Andy. You wind up in this um, the the evil cabal that you are fighting against has been trying to restore this flying city out of another dimension. Very standard Ooh. JRPG fare. Well, um, that's kind of cool, though. I mean, I've never been on a planet from another dimension that flies around. Um, so they they succeed. You know, they they bring it back. Okay. And they are after um, the power source 
of the flying city, basically. Oh, um, so they're going to crash it, too. Well, they they want the power <laughs> source for their own purposes, whatever those may be. Not mm-hmm. entirely clear. Nefarious uh, machinations. Undoubtedly. <laughs> uh, but, you know, they, of course, are doing everything in their power to make sure that you still have a chance to stop them. <laughs> wow. Right. And the, it's, it, there's this whole thing where the, um, the power source has achieved some level of semi-sentience. Okay. Uh, it can grant people the things that they wish for, but it also has a very strong sense of self-preservation. So anything that seeks to shut it down or steal it or seal it away, it fights against. Mm-hmm. Um, and so there, you know, you get the whole history of how it was sealed away in the first place because it basically lulled people into this narcotic sense of apathy where it instantly provided anything that they wanted with, you know, n- without judgment. Right. So really? if someone wanted something, it would just provide it to them. Uh-huh. Um, so long as it wasn't a threat to itself. And the a small set of the people realized that, you know, this, this was totally unsustainable. The birth rate was dropping. You know, people weren't engaging in life anymore. They were just living inside this dream. Wow. This is a, oof, what a, ga- this is a game telling you that, by the way. Yeah. So oh, yeah. meta. A little bit. A little bit. Yeah. The, uh, it's just the, you know, it, the, the contrast from that first game where you're this group of happy go lucky bracers running around trying to solve mysteries and crimes in cities and stuff and, you know, clear out the occasional monsters and whatnot to all of a sudden there's an ancient city appearing above that's threatening the entire country and turning off all forms of magic and causing havoc and wars and, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh, by the way, if you can't stop it, the much larger military country on your border is going to invade you. You know what this <laughs> it reminds me of is like your sixth week of a J of a of a RPG group. Like you've done D and D for six weeks, doing the like, oh, we did the town quests, you know, and then uh, the the DM went out and bought the next book. A little bit, right? Like there's the. All of a sudden, this, these are the quests for higher level players, and yeah. all of a sudden, it's like, "Hey, the king contacts you now." Yeah, right. Yeah, uh, <laughs> and it, it is. Uh, they go some really wild places in this second chapter. I, I people should play this game if you're at all interested in some of the stuff that Michael has been talking about here. I can't say enough good things about these two games, uh, and they go together in such a great way. Uh, and there is a third chapter, uh, which hopefully uh, Michael decides to play at some point. But I I have it, so it will definitely happen. The first two games, though, really make a a great pair. Um, even if you choose not to play the third chapter, which you should, because there is interesting stuff there. Uh, but the the first two make the a great arc together. So yeah, the the and, and I know, look, I know that the. Third one follows uh, Kevin more than it follows the right. uh, the main characters, but his like his scene at the end where oh, yeah. uh, he you know he confronts the the villain all alone and basically just literally pillars of salt him. Mm-hmm. Yeah, gives you some questions. You're like, huh? Yeah, this guy is way more than he has let on. Yeah. Uh, and, and they do go into that in the third chapter, of course. Um, but it's, uh, I really loved that game and the way they kind of end it is, is just really great. And, you know, sort of the ways that that game and the effects of that game ripple through the other games in that series are, I, I've never seen a series that's so tightly interconnected between all of its sequels and kind of spin off games and stuff, uh, you know, to the point where, like, I don't know why you would ever want to play, you know, Cold Steel 1 without having played these other games, even though, you know, ostensibly it's a place to start, right? I saw I saw a list, because I was curious after I finished the second one here, of recommended play order, and the person who put it together actually had two different suggestions, and one of them was that you start with Trails in the Sky with the first chapter, and the other one was that 
you start with the first Cold Steel game and then play through the Trails in the Sky trilogy and then go back to Cold Steel 2. Hmm. Uh, I guess I see why you would do that uh, without saying too much. There are definitely some references in Cold Steel 1 to stuff that happens in second chapter, which you really wouldn't have any idea about unless you had played uh, second chapter. But playing it in that order, I guess, would give you a little bit of like, oh, this is why this stuff matters and to these people or whatever. Um, like why they were talking about this kind of stuff. Uh, I, I could see it. Obviously, I didn't do that, so I don't, you know. Sure. Um, but it is, uh, yeah, I'm I'm very excited uh, that I have, uh, you enjoyed it. So hopefully uh, when you get around to playing third or Cold Steel or whatever you end up choosing to go to next, uh, we can go along for that ride too. Oh, yeah. Third will, third will be coming up here pretty soon. Um, but I also took a break after finishing that. And uh, fired up something new. A deserved break. Yeah, yeah. You know, those uh, JRPGs can be long and involved. Yeah, I don't really quite know how to do them back to back to back. Uh, seems impossible at this stage in life. <laughs> I know I used <laughs> I did, to be yeah. able to do it. I, I definitely did a year in college, I think, when it was 7, 8, 10... And ten two back to back to back to back. Oof. Yeah, I did. I did two. I did two back to back. But yeah, okay. Well, what what is it instead? What's up next? So you know uh, something else that is near and dear to JJ's heart. Um, a, Castlevania, a Metroidvania, in <laughs> fact. Yeah. Um, so this Hollow this. Night? No, actually, this Dead has Zone. the distinction. No, it's okay. not one we've talked about. Relax, Andrew. Let him. Let him talk. Uh, I'm trying. <laughs> You're not going to get this <laughs> I'm one. Too I don't excited. think. <laughs> um, so this this has the distinction of being a successful Kickstarter story. Okay. Um, I did not find it while the Kickstarter was was live, um, but I found it pretty soon after, um, and so I think it's a little over four years. Uh, in development, um, July of 2014, I think, is when the Kickstarter ran. Um, but it is a game called Time Spinner. I don't hmm. know anything about that, nor have I ever heard of it. Okay. Um, it started, so it's by a company called Lunar Ray Games, which was founded by a guy named Bodie Lee, um, who started the Kickstarter and he had worked in the industry before uh, as a game developer and decided once this got funded that this was going to be his full-time job. So he started, you know, his own independent company uh, and this was the, the game that he worked on. And I believe that it actually started for him as a an idea on paper in high school. He, you know, fleshed the whole world out and then coded a part of it in college for a class project and, and won a prize for it in college. Um, and was just sort of waiting for the right time to pull the trigger on it. And it's, it's been great so far. Uh, it has, you know, it has a lot of the, the things that you sort of hearken back to, um, for a good Metroidvania in terms of the movement and the combat. Um, you know, you have, uh, one of the things that made me smile was when I realized that the, the main character has a back dash. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Which is they a nice little, a nice little nod. Yeah. They know they um, are looking at symphony there. Yep. But you, so you play, um, a young woman who is from a tribe that guards the ability to move backwards and forwards in time and you have been you step into the story that they have been pursued um throughout multiple different timelines by an invading empire that is trying to get its hands on the technology and they you know the the small tribe whenever they are threatened or about to be overrun they send a messenger back in time to warn the tribe and move them somewhere else, basically. 
So the, you know, on the, on the part of the messenger, they are essentially erasing them, their old timeline and having to start all over. They've got their own little, uh, Reese scenario, huh? Sending them back to get John Connor out of there. Yeah, a little bit. Um, but in this, you know, when this particular story starts, they catch up with you as you're running to the machine and they shatter it. So you get thrown, you get thrown somewhere completely different and are trying to not only shatter it, but they, you, you watch the emperor kill your mother before you disappear. Okay. So you, you set out on this, uh, sort of path for vengeance and to to stop the empire Ooh. Um, so it's good you know the the combat is is similar to some of the metroid games you have two um two orbs magic orbs that are surrounding you at all times you look kind of like the the center of an atom with the electrons circling you um and each orb has its own ability so there's like a fire orb and a sword orb and you know, depending on which ones you have equipped, they they alternate attacking. So you throw fireballs and then you swing a sword and, and back and forth. And then you have um, like a, a larger magic power that you can equip. Um, that, you know, you you can use it several times in a row, but it drains your magic bar, which slowly refills over time. Right. Um, you know, all, all of this familiar to people who yeah. have played Metroidvania style games. Um, the, there's the, the square box map that you love when you pull up the map menu. <laughs> um, one of, one of the, the nice touches for me, having played through a lot of super Metroid games, a lot of Castlevania games is, they coded in the option when you pull up the map menu to drop markers. And you what can does drop that get un- you though. You can drop an unlimited number of markers in f- like five different colors. What it gets you is not having to remember, oh, I have to come back here and I have to go back there. Because oh. the map the map doesn't tell you, hey, there's a place here with a treasure chest that you can't reach right now. Right, it doesn't mm. give you it doesn't give you the little dot that Super Metroid <sighs> gives you when there's an item. That's good. So you can you can drop markers of your own all over the map and code them, you know, based on whatever way you want to use the color system as a reminder for yourself, hey, there's something here that you're gonna want to come back for. No more writing it down on a piece of paper. Oh, it's so nice. That's really great. I love that they let you decide what the colors mean and what the symbols are gonna be or whatever. Yep. That's rad. I yeah, that's a really cool idea. It's a great touch. Um and it's it actually has been one of my one of my favorite things about it because I don't have to I can focus on where I am currently in the game rather than right. trying to keep in my head all of the okay, I got this new ability. What can I go back to now? What am I forgetting? It's just like, oh, the blue quills are all chests. The mm. gray quills are all stores that I can go back to. It just, it takes the burden of having to either become a cartographer or, you know, a a historian (laughs) of all the things that you've seen. So in speaking of maps, the maps are usually a big deal in these kind of games. Mm -hmm. Uh, What sort of way did they choose to lay the map out? Does it sort of fill it as you go? Does it do a, one of those, like, you get like a kind of a general idea of this area, but you have to fill in the nooks and crannies. Like, what kind of? No, it's very Super Metroid style. So the ma- when you start, the only part of the map you see is the square you're standing in, and it fills in as you know as you move to the next square, it fills in that square of the map. Got it. And like, if um, you j- if you're jumping, does jumping is it like rooms or is it more like uh, the exact square that you're on? Uh, it's more sense? it's more like the room, yeah. So the room does have some size to it and you know, it'll it'll move left and right without you moving out of it. But the each square does have its own set size. Got it. Right. So okay. one one room might be a long hallway and it might be four or five squares long, but you're running you'll run through the whole hallway and it'll slowly move you as you move from one square to the next. Okay, got it. Yeah. Um, man. And the map the map does have some of its own color coding too. Um, so there's a, there's a portal system that you activate not long into the game. Um, and you can, you know, the portals let you warp between any portal that you've been to before. 
um, in any of the timelines because there are multiple timelines going on too. Oh yeah. Um, so, so how do they represent the timelines in the in the map? So the it's a uh, an L and R toggle between the timelines, and each timeline is a is a slightly different color. Hmm. And so oh, when you okay. pull up the map, you know you'll tap R. Um, and it'll show you, it'll move over and show you the past timeline instead of the present timeline. Hmm. That's pretty cool. Yeah. So it's just, it's really well thought out, right? You can tell that this was the kind of thing that he's been planning for a long time. It seems like he needed some sort of mind map. (laughs) You know, it's a lot to keep track of. Uh, so going to keep you busy for a while, short game, long game. What do you think? Um, I'm not sure how long it's going to be. Um, there's, you know, it, it gives you an idea of your, um, discovery percentage. So it tells you how much of the map you've uncovered, um, as a percentage, which is kind of nice because in, in good Metroidvania fashion, there are hidden rooms. Right. Um, yes. And so there, they did, and I, I don't know if it's, you know, one of the orbs that you can equip and the, the orbs have secondary abilities. So you can make, um, you can make your orbs so that they catch things on fire. You can make them so that they have blades on them and do damage just to anything that they touch. So I don't know if it's a virtue of one of the orbs I have equipped, but I have noticed that if you are pressing up against a fake wall, you'll get a, a like crumbling animation. Mm. Oh. So, and it, you know, it might be that the because the orb I have equipped does damage, it it thinks I'm attacking the the fake wall. I haven't played around with that yet, but it is it, you know, it is a nice little touch. It it sometimes saves you from uh from having to press up against every blank wall. <laughs> yeah, good yeah. point. When you're when say, you've got ninety nine percent on the map and you're you can't find that last room. This is what it's like in Bravely Default. You're running around because you know there's another chest on the level from your uh, little power that tells you, but you have to run against every corner just to see. Yep. Yeah, I was gonna say that's definitely a thing in like well Metroid. You know, you Metroid. Can, yeah, there's definitely a thing in Hollow Knight and other games where it's just kind of like this is a wall, but is it a real wall? I have to attack it now. <laughs> <laughs> cool. So yeah, but we'll you know we'll we'll see how long it uh, it winds up taking. I don't I don't know what the projected play time is supposed to be because um, it's so new. It just launched last week, right? Awesome. You know um, that does remind me too. Something else that just launched um, seems to be getting some great reviews. Mega Man Eleven. Is that game actually out? Uh, yes. Yeah. So, I think it came uh, out we're this getting week or we're getting real close. Yeah, the reviews are out. Okay. And, and the reviews are saying Mega Man is back somehow. Okay. Yeah, I have seen uh I have seen a lot of good uh a lot of good publicity for it. I, like I don't know Mega if we Man. need an 11th one, but well, too late. They already made it. <laughs> <laughs> it has been what, almost 8 years or so? Yeah, gosh. Yep. 10 was was 10 on the Wii or the Wii U? I oh, I don't even remember. Can't remember it being I on remember, the Wii U for sure. I remember Mega Man Nine when they came out. They were like, "Hey, we're going back to the old school." You know, it's like NES style levels and all that stuff, and it was hard again and all that. And that they was the Wii. You know, they might have put that one out in broad release. Ten or nine? For ten. Oh, ten. Yeah, ten maybe. maybe. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> okay, so it's definitely been a while though. It's yep. definitely been a while. <laughs> a lot of people have been waiting for one for a long time. I don't know what iterations. I haven't played a Mega Man in quite a long time, but, you know. What was the last Mega Man you played, Andrew? Like, the highest numbered one? Six? Maybe. Okay, I think, I think six is the last one that was on the NES. Yeah, it's one of the classic ones, but I didn't play it on the NES. I think I played it on a later packed system. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I definitely haven't played any of the modern age ones because I never really. You're never into the X's or the X2's or 3's or any of those? Oh, you know, I probably See, have I, played one of the X's. I played I played a lot more of those. I played through the X 1, 2, and 3. I think I have 1 and 3 still. 
Um, and then the, the zero games, I think I played through cause you know, they bounced around to right. the DS at that point, but I think I played through the first two or three of those as well. Was there an X on the Wii U? Mm, there mm. may have re-released one for virtual console, okay. but not anything yeah. else. I don't think. So I doubt, I don't know. I, I don't know which X I would have played, but I'd played one with more modern graphics, I guess. The yeah. uh, I think I probably played I probably played Mega Man Six also one of the late era NES games, but I don't think I ever actually played all of any one of the X games. Oh no, that's not true. I've definitely played Mega Man Nine. Okay, I don't think I ever beat that game because it was really hard. I definitely have watched them play the X games during. Games done quick. Those are fascinating to see them doing it all yeah. with like one upgrade to the suits. You know, yeah, yeah. Those are the the Mega Man runs are usually really optimized, or they have like really interesting glitches and stuff. So yeah, people to check those out when those speed runs come around. <laughs> uh, Mike uh, Michael's finished with games. I am still Fire Emblem Ming Uh I mostly uh, have been playing a lot of Dragon Quest XI still. Ooh. Did you uh, make which a custom is a game. playlist or something? <laughs> uh, I installed that mod that uh, it gave you the orchestrated music, uh, and wow, it's a lot better. Oh. <laughs> hey, you know when you have a, uh, a song and then there's different instruments, <laughs> and like uh, they're played by real instruments? They sound like a drum, and you know, there's, a, there's horns and flutes and stuff but you don't get that good. midi quality yeah i'm good with that I, I think i like the part where it sounds like good music i think that's the part that i like nice um yeah so that i've been doing a lot of, a lot a lot of that uh that game does a thing that i wish more rpg games would do is i think a lot of other games have kind of come around to this where they're like hey you know you have all these points and you put them into a skill tree what if you like don't like your choices what if you just like pay a not that much amount of money and let you just do it again. I think more RPGs should let you just do that. That sounds like a thing that I would enjoy. It's like, sure. oh, you find like a really sweet great sword, but you respect in the knife tree. Sorry. Like, I want to use that, man. Oh. Uh, so I've been enjoying that. Uh, I also dipped my toe in the uh, Magic Arena open beta, which has now finally commenced. Uh, have you gotten any chance to jump in on Magic the Gathering, Andrew? Um, no. <laughs> I, I know the progress now counts starting as of, uh, what, five days before this podcast, so I'm probably already missing on quests at this point. Um, but I... I I know once I start, if I'm going to commit to trying to get magic cards and stuff like that, um, mm. it's it's going to be back to daily quests. And I don't know, do I want daily quests? What do you, do so I want they, daily quests? I'm asking. I'm not. It's not well, rhetorical. So <laughs> you know the uh, the free to play progression in that game does do the daily quest stuff. Right. Right. Um, but the for the first several days anyway, they give you a. Uh, once you get through the like kind of tutorial stuff where you earn five decks, one of each of the five colors. So they redo the player experience now, now because of the yes. account wipes. Yes. Okay. Uh, so you redo all that stuff, um, or you can skip it and they just give you the decks. Like, cause, oh. look, because why? Because I don't need to do that again. If you know how to play Magic, you don't need to do that. It's yeah. not you're not gaining much. Yeah. Um, I'd suggest fun, people but... do it the first time, just because there's some weird interactions with like when you put down a card that makes you pick two cards. The yeah, order, you want to do it yeah, to learn the yeah. UI of the game yeah. more than the the magic part of it. You definitely need to do that. Um, but once you get out of that, there is what they still call it the new player experience, but it's it's not really the they give you a series of tailored quests to earn you uh, dual color decks. So what do you mean tailored? Just, uh, the quest is like play a game and win one, or oh. uh, or, or win one, or it, I think it's just play even. Okay. Uh, and then you get this dual color deck, and then you get a quest that's like play X spells of Y and Z color. Hey, you just got a deck of Y and Z colors. <laughs> and then you get another pack or something, right? Right. 
Um, the the only bone I have to pick with this system, which Uh-oh. is a good system, and it's like per day, right? Each day you get the deck and the pack if you do both parts. Okay. It's not that it doesn't carry over. It'll still be there for you when you join later. But there's, you know, five colors, so how many dual color combinations can you really make out of that, right? Uh, Five colors, dual color combinations, five times five is 25? Uh, no, it's not lower. how it works. It's lower because the... Um, not all the colors go with each other, right? In Magic, you can't really, like, team up some of the colors because they don't work. Really? So, I mean, back in the day, you could make weird decks that did. So, like, you red still, and blue. Uh, you can't do red and blue. It's not that it's illegal, right? But they're not going to give you a pre-constructed deck around one of the ones that don't make sense. Okay. Uh, all right. And so, you know, they have, I believe there are 10 different pre-constructed decks. You get a random one each day, but you only get five. And that sucks. Yeah, that does stink. Because what if you want to play green, but you only get like white, black, white, blue, red, black. Yeah, right. And I'm already three in and I haven't done green yet. Yeah. And, and you could totally do one that doesn't have. And so beyond that, even, right? It's like, this is oh, a good I reminder got... for people that like they give you 60 free cards. Car- yeah. Like these are every 60 deck card of these decks. has free. Every deck of these has 60 cards, and yeah. it has, you know, not a lot of rares. No, it's but mostly each deck, commons. And- mostly commons and uncommons, but it's not like they're, you know... Magic is, uh, unlike Hearthstone, it is a little bit more tilted toward the rarity side, which kind of sucks. Uh-huh. But uh, it's not like all the cards in it are complete useless garbage. Yeah. There are definitely I'm- some playable stuff in there. That and popper the popper category decks- exists for a reason. Popper as yes. in P A U P E R. Um, yes, there are many decks you can make, especially I think white was really popular for a while. Making common uncommon decks, a lot of people mm-hmm. have found that that is possible. Uh, it is weird because it's a paid game, unlike Hearthstone. Like, oh, you got to make every card across the board almost as good as every other card, or people will, you know, say you're yeah. power creeping, etc. Magic just straight up is like, hey, legendary cards are just insanely powerful, and sometimes just straight up win you a game. Yep. And also, uh, like, hey, that common card, just not as good as that rare one. That's just right. straight up. Yeah. And the math uh, doesn't so, always have to work out. It's a common card. And it, it's definitely worth pointing that out because these these decks do contain certain numbers of rares and, you know, for those two colors. So it's like, oh, hey, this is a green-red rare. Or right. it's a it's a it's a dual color land that produces green and red. And if you're going to play ex- those decks, if you're going to play two super color valuable. decks, uh, you you need them those cards. Yeah, and they're hard yeah, to get. You wanna, you, you're going to have to craft most of them if you want to play two color decks. Probably right. It's like the chance you open it in a pack pretty low. Um, so yeah, definitely. And it, it's a and they're giving you this stuff for free. You know, it's a hey, here's one of the rare lands of that color, so that you know, like, hey, this exists. Maybe this is something you would want to think about creating. And, you know, here's, like, maybe one or two other rares in those colors and, you know, a bunch of cool commons and uncommons to give you ideas. And it's fun, but you don't get to choose what those color combinations that you get are. So if you really wanted to play, like, white-black and you just happen to get, you know, all the red ones and then, you know, blue-green at the end, sorry. Yeah. Uh, And that's a big bummer. Uh, They should... in terms of how many cards there are in that game, just give the people the 10 pre-constructed decks. It's not going to change that much, really. Like, <laughs> the vast majority of those cards don't see competitive play, Or really. let people pick. Like, let them re-roll that quest for a different yeah. deck color. Yeah, if people want to say, hey, let's just go ahead and, and you know, let the, give you a choice of three or whatever, and then by the end you'll have at least seen all of them as a choice. Sure. I don't think the community is big enough for them to hear that, though, and roll it back. So, Yeah, oh, people well. are complaining, but of course, you know, people complain about everything. So. Sure. Of course they do. <laughs> all right. Well, uh, I want to introduce a new segment at the end of the podcast here. All right. Hit us with it. It's not going to be every week, but it will be recurring. I'm going to call it component connection, component class, component something. I have decided it's time. My computer is reaching an age, an age where one might begin to look into where you'd put it out to pasture. You know, where will I have a good home next? Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
You're, AK, you're about AKA to AKA one of your parents needs a new computer. <laughs> I was going to say, are, are you going to go old yeller this computer in the backyard? <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually considering um, popping out the processor in this in the long term and the video card and putting in a processor that has built-in graphics and putting a video capture card in it in case we ever need to stream stuff for the podcast. So okay, uh, that kind of gives the game away here. I'm building a new PC. But I'm going to do it. Always an exciting time. Yeah, it is. Isn't it? It's just one of those moments where you're like, I've decided. And here we are. (laughs) And and then it's like making a Christmas list when you're a kid. Yes. So my Christmas list, Very expensive Christmas list. Oh, look, look, look. (laughs) We're we're not going to break the bank. And I'm not going to build off of somebody's pre-designed, the budget way to build a gaming computer. I'm doing it myself. I'm picking the parts I want. And I'm actually building a computer that's like a... A view piece this time around. Like, you're going to look at it. It's going to sit on a shelf. Okay, so you're not doing the little box this time. No, well, it's still going to be a small box. Okay. So, but um, you want to... But what I'm hearing is that you want a case that looks good. It's going to look... Because it's going to go on a shelf. You're going to be able to see it up against the wall. Conversation piece. Yeah, yeah. Fractal uh, design. Yeah, mm, no, no. I can give <laughs> you straight up. Okay, but here's how this segment's going to go. I'm not telling you the pieces I've picked. Mm. until I find them on sale and buy them. Okay. okay. Do you do you have a budget for yourself, like a not to exceed? Uh, I do. Okay. There is... I don't... I don't have... Hold on. This is a temporary pause in the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I have to log into this thing. PC part picker? Yes. Yeah. This is not research. A great website that everyone oh, should use. It is not research. It is just the this best not, website for building a computer. This is not research. This is uh, being unprepared. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I, I don't... The budget's not in PC Part Picker, obviously, but the computer I have built is in PC Part Picker. Um, and it'll spit you out a price as part of you building it in there. Yeah, but, but uh, I can tell you, based on the parts that I'm looking at... How much I was trying to, how much I was t- trying to to aim for here. Okay. So, my budget is not to exceed, without monitors, twelve hundred dollars. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's certainly that's reasonable. totally doable. Well, I le- I left. I wanted to do a thousand, and then I realistically looked at video card prices. The video cards are the real sticking point here. And unless yep. video card dry prices drop by more than half and memory prices drop by more than half, I don't think I'm going to hit a thousand. But we'll see as this process goes along. We'll see. Well, you're you're hitting it at a good time too because you're you have Black Friday sales coming up here real mm-hmm. soon. Yep. And then the holiday sales will start. So I don't, I don't necessarily have to complete it this year. I'm just saying this is the process to starting, and it's happening now. I have my first part. Came in the mail today. Okay. Where'd you Where'd you start? The power supply that I had picked was on sale. 550 watt Corsair RMX power supply. ATX. Fully nice. modular. 80 plus okay. gold. Yeah. Nice. That, that fully modular part is the most important part, actually. Yeah. Yeah, fully modular, 80 plus gold, uh, Japanese capacitors, and um, silent running when not under load. Good stuff. Yeah. Very nice. 550 uh, watts, so you can tell it's not going to be an SLI system. Also for the price that I said, it's not. And for the the size, it's going to be a smaller case. Uh, It's not going to be SLI. So I don't need a ton of power. This should give me... About 7,500 watts more than I need. But, uh, yeah, there you go. Um, I don't know how, how maybe you people... don't know. Yeah. Oh, I was just going to explain the modular stuff. Yeah, uh, yeah. If, if people don't know, power supplies for your PC, you know, it's the brick where you plug the cord into the back where the where goes the plug on the wall for the power, you know? JJ, you're but, doing exactly what I hope to do with this segment. But the <laughs> No, no, <laughs> really, important. honestly, this is no. what I wanted to do. I wanted to add this. We've gotten... I've gotten... So many friends that were like, we've talked about building, building computers on this podcast. They're like, oh, I can never do that. 
it's so it's not that tough. Well, realize. listen to these segments, and we're gonna and do really, it. We're gonna build a PC, yeah. and we're gonna explain what the parts do right now. And you know, the power supply literally you know provides power, right? It supplies power. Andrew knows that. Hey, I'm not trying to do something crazy here, so I don't need a. T- I don't need 800 watts. I don't need a thousand watts or whatever, which is you know measurements of power. Uh, uh, my current PC uh, runs on 300 watts. Right, a very modest amount, really. And the lower that number is, the less your PC costs to operate. Yes. Yep. And it being modular is very helpful because that means the other side of it, the side that's inside the box, has little plugs for you to plug in the cords as you need them. Right, you don't have a bunch of dead cables hanging out all over your case. Exactly. And so if you only have, you know, your one video card and your motherboard and your couple fans or whatever that need power, uh, your hard drive... Uh, then you don't have to plug yeah, right. in like come on like <laughs> come four on. cords. I did, look. I'm just saying you could, in theory, only have a few things that need to be plugged in there. Sure. Yeah. So you plug in, you know, one or two, three, four cables, and then that's it. And then you don't have to have this giant snake mess of cables that you have no idea what they do or where they go, and uh, nowhere and, to put. And but the box comes with all those cables if you want them. Right. They're but in there. You don't need them, and so just leave them off to the side for later when maybe you do need them. Yeah. Oh, uh, n- another good plug for PC part picker is if you like uh like I did not the first time I built a computer, if you don't know what kind of wattage your selected parts are going to draw, it will tell you. It will give you an estimated power usage for the components you've selected, and then I think if you want it'll suggest a an appropriately sized power supply. Yeah, if you have your compatibility checker on, it will yeah. it will tell you how much power at least that you need. I always say you need at least 10% more, but um probably even more than that if you are going to plug in a lot of peripherals and things like that, you should maybe... There's certainly nothing wrong with having a margin of error. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah and and you never want to be drawing to the limit. You always want to be drawing more- under the limit, right? Right. More power will not kill you. Not enough will certainly kill you. Right. Uh, or it, well, uh, it certainly won't cause your system to work anyway. <laughs> yeah. Yep. You could have a little shutdown. So that's it. That's component class 101. Uh, RMX 550 watt power supply for the new PC coming. All right. At so you've got point. juice. So I've got, yeah. You just yeah. Need a- mm-hmm. I don't have anywhere to put it. I don't have anything to plug into it. But uh, I nailed that power supply for $52. Hey, that seems like nice. a good deal to me. Yeah. I think that that was uh, the right price over the weekend. Uh, found a little sale on that one. So there you go. That's what I would think that we should do whenever I get a part. I don't, that's, I'm just doing it. I'm not, I didn't even ask. <laughs> if people like want to know more about uh, where we're headed with building a PC or have their own suggestions on a power supply, even though I already bought one. Cause you know, people like to suggest things even though you've already done it. Don't get one that shorts out when you plug it in. Don't. Yeah. Don't <laughs> do that. Per, 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 personal uh, experience. I was also very happy to see that this Corsair one came with a 10 year warranty on it. Oh, that's solid. Yeah. Nice. So if it does short uh, out in the six months later when I plug it in, finally, <laughs> anyway, it's not that tough to avoid that, people. Don't don't let their stories scare you. Uh, <laughs> but if you are go- if you want to make those suggestions, it's podcast at wewergamers dot com. That's the email address. We'll listen to those suggestions. And we'll probably talk about them on here. Reminder: uh, Before I'll- people jump off the podcast, we are going to do fantasy football, but we like to and- let people go. <laughs> yeah, uh, and if you want to hit us up on Facebook or Twitter or Instagram, we're at we were gamers on there. Check us out. Uh, follow this podcast subscribe in all the places that you can do uh fine podcasts like stitcher and wherever else fine podcasts exist so uh let's hear the rantacy i guess it's the rantacy the rundown the i feel like we're getting to the stage we've got we've got um our little radio segments when zero cool does games for us uh we've got the component class now and we've got randy c football it might be time to start getting some more bumpers for music or something 
for like, like segments, segments. Uh, some more little lead in. Yeah, you know, I you, or like getting the, some dude with a deeper voice than us to do like re, you know read out fantasy football. I'm just stalling because I don't want to know if the Broncos lost, and I don't want to know how badly Tyreek Hill destroyed my fantasy team. Well, well, how about before we before we potentially break your heart? I I got two words: Tyreek Hill, bye weeks. They did. They, 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 they did have start. started. Yeah, uh, it was the Panthers I don't know. and somebody else, and uh, the Redskins. Redskins. Uh, we not. We don't say that on this podcast anymore. Washington. Washington. Huh. Washington. Um, but yeah, that was um, two of my two of my starting running backs right there. Uh, I have Ouch. a similar issue. Can I? Uh, in that I own Christian McCaffrey in my uh-huh. leagues this uh-huh. year, uh, and. I lost by 1.5 points oh. in one of them. Oh, so we all own... Again, reminder for people, we're all in different leagues this year. Uh, our our co-league run by myself didn't have uh, a lot of time this year. So um, the ones where we didn't have to manage them is the ones we're still in. We all have Christian McCaffrey? I think we do. Yep. I think we also all have um, Mike Williams. The Chargers? On my bench. The Chargers yeah, also player? also okay. on my yeah, bench, yeah. which was great because he had no points. But so I'm going to give you a a real bad scenario here. My starting running backs are Christian McCaffrey and Joe Mixon. Ooh, that's and, not great. Yep, yeah, I have Mixon as well. So I put up this week uh, to start my fantasy team: Javorius Allen, Buck Allen, and Derek. Yeah, me Henry. too. That was a mistake. Der- Derek uh, Henry yeah. was all I could get. Muster, you guys. I had uh, Javoris Allen, uh, Buck Allen as well. Uh, that didn't do great for me. No. And uh, not Derrick Henry, but Dion Lewis, who at least did something, unlike Derrick Henry. Sure. Uh, man. Th- but my cor- really, I lost it in the quarterback game this week. Drew. Uh, Drew Brees. Ugh. And in a different league, the magic was not with the Fitz magic. Oh, no. There was... No magic. You just had a complete quarterback breakdown this week, huh? Basically, yes. Yeah. <laughs> I also have Drew Brees, and I'm looking at the top four spots on my roster, which are QB, RB, RB, wide receiver, populated by unfortunate running backs, and Drew Brees and Odell Beckham. Anyone want to guess how many points that totals? Let's see. Drew Brees and Odell Beckham together probably got 10 yeah, right around more than ten. Yeah, fifteen. Okay. Ooh. Yeah, fifteen yeah, Drew, plus seven Drew Brees. is twenty-two. Uh, Drew Brees didn't even get ten in my league. Nope. Twenty-two points. My tight end uh, is destroyed. His legs are not working, so I had to start Dallas. D- Dallas Goddard was the only thing I could come up with in our league, and he got one point. The tight end has been such a rough position this year. It's I just getting don't worse. know what to do. There's no, yeah, yeah. there's like no one. It's getting worse. A whole bunch of people like got very hurt this weekend. Kelsey or Gronk or yeah. like Kittle, I guess, but that's recency bias. And like, there's yeah. really no one at that position. It's tough. Yeah, I got I got lucky at tight end this week. I had Jack Doyle. Uh, well, I had I have Reed, but he's on by, uh, and I had Doyle, and he got deactivated because of a hip injury so i picked up ebron who was doyle's backup oh, knowing out. how much knowing how much andrew luck loves throwing to his tight ends um and he you know he picked up a late touchdown so yeah. so i've clicked this and seen that the broncos have lost but tyree killed had kind of a quiet night uh he did so i held on to win my game by three points hey With there you go points from my quarterback thank you nice. cooper hmm. cup and John Brown oh, going nuts. I, yeah, I have to cup. thank the podcast. We had a very late Sunday night powwow to help try to save my fantasy team. <laughs> <laughs> and um, John Brown was the suggested player by JJ and Michael here. And I put him in and he ended up with 18 points. Caught a couple nice bombs. Yeah, he in a game that really sucked. Honestly. I was seriously concerned when I saw his line. It was three catches, and then it was three catches for 116 yards and a touchdown. Yep, that'll do. He just got way behind the secondary. Yeah, 
Oh, man. Well, I feel better when I eke out a win I don't deserve. As, uh, you know, hey, as Bill Belichick says, on to week five. <laughs> We're not even thinking about this week. We're on to week five. Have you seen that new commercial with the guy at the auto shop? And he says, Bill Belichick's going to be so excited. And it's just a picture of him staring at the camera. <laughs> yes. <laughs> with, with some horrifying noise happening in the background. I don't even believe this. Wow. Looking at the benches, Sammy Watkins out with a hamstring injury. Wow. So that's zero points, six points, zero, 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 one, zero. I played all the right players. Yikes. Yeah, I did not. Oh, no. I have, I have TJ Yeldon on my bench with 20 points. Ooh. Wrecked. Not fun. Do you think that there's too much offense in the league? I heard mm-hmm. a stat today that was five 400-yard throwers this past weekend. Well, I mean, when you, as a defender, you can't touch the quarterback, it makes it a little easier for them to be able to deliver passes. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know how to answer that question. Because I think the offense is exciting and makes the game fun to watch. The problem is that the rules that they've instituted this year, I absolutely don't agree with, so... There needs to be some rules that help make the defense exciting, right? Like all the rules to make football safer have been about stopping defensive plays that I'm not arguing that they shouldn't do, right? Like a lot of the head safety and stuff like that have all been very, very good ideas. And we talked a little bit about this off air with like, the stiff arm, maybe they change the stiff arm and how that's allowed to be applied, like well, shoulders down or, you know, um, but maybe it's time to like curb the offensive plays equally. So you have exciting plays on defense again, cerebral plays on defense again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't know. The, the way it it's currently, I think is a little bit unsustainable because yeah, it's uh you know i thankfully uh the officiating has calmed down just slightly <laughs> they had uh, a meeting the, i the guess flagging of, of of uh showing them the, the rule they didn't change the rule and they said it's a good rule but maybe you apply it less judiciously <laughs> <laughs> which is like if you have to say that doesn't that mean it's bad yeah poorly written yeah, so hopefully, you know, like we said, we're, you know, on to week five, I guess. Yeah, <laughs> what do we think? Did the Giants as trash as they look? Yes. Ooh. Is it time to, for me to try and trade Odell Beckham? I don't see that team getting good do you this think, year. Do you think anyone will buy Odell Beckham based on the name, or am I going to have to sell low? I think you might have to sweeten that deal a little bit. Oh, my God. You have to sweeten the deal to get Odell Beckham off your roster. That's terrible. Nah, nah, nah. nah. Hold him for this year, and then in the off season, deal him. Yeah. Because people will forget. He, it's true, and he's a high pick for me next year. So, hmm. Yeah, maybe, maybe towards, towards, the, end of the, next towards year. the end of the season, I'll... If I'm not getting into the playoffs, I'll trade for a player that I want to keep. Yeah. Yeah, that has worked out well for you in years past. It has. Cooper Cup being the leading candidate for I do know how to play in a keeper league. (laughs) John Brown also looking to be a candidate for the the coming year. Yep. He certainly looks capable this year for sure. One would hope. He's only 26. He could be around a while. Could be. We'll see. Any other fantasy commiseration we need to do? I think that's all I got. Where Thankfully. where are we at? I'm I, I'm sitting on three and one. Same here. Well, yeah. as yeah, as of just a few minutes ago, I'm I'm three and one. Right. Yeah, I'm three and one in my more competitive league. So. Awesome. With the one being this week. Oh, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> 
Well, I expect it to be two and two, so it's a good way to end the day. <laughs>